just sitting in my living room and the Lord uh, impressed upon me this. He's like, he said, this moment in time is unprecedented, which we all know with COVID-19 and the racial, racial unrest going on in the U.S. and around the world. But he said, this time is also unprecedented for the church. Everybody's on YouTube, everybody's doing live streaming and all their conferences are um, virtual and all meetings are virtual. We're not meeting in person anymore, we're not hugging, we're not doing anything like that. We're social distancing six feet apart but he also he also said there's more to come he said he said the word that he's going to release the word that he's going to release in the atmosphere will be unheard of it will be something that the that that Paul Paul didn't go through or Peter didn't go through. There will be no reference to it at all, and it won't be a doomsday word or it won't be a word that he's going to slay every country or whatever. Words like that do come. But this word will be something that he's, he hasn't said before, he hasn't spoken before. There is no, like he said to me very clearly, and this might sound weird, but he said there won't, won't be scriptures to back it up. There won't be anything to back it up. It will be just his voice. And he's like, I need, he's like, I need my people to love my written word, but know that it doesn't stop at my written word. And know that it, the, know that my words are going to become living and there'll be words that nobody's ever said and you'll be wondering is this God I can't find this in Matthew Mark Luke and John and he's saying now yes he's saying I need you to become my living word the living word means basically the word walking he went through this with me a few years ago he said there are two types of god's word he said there is the written word which is the bible which we all love and there is the walking word which is the living breathing active word which is not in the Bible, but has its root has its roots in the Bible, but the word itself is not in the Bible. So it's like a rhema word unstun. And when I when I say a rhema word, have you ever been watching uh, something and you said, "Oh my gosh." That preacher is, or that person is saying uh, some, something that I can relate to. That word is right for me. Remember what I talked about last week about the preacher that I was so, I was so freed because somebody was going through the same thing as the preacher that I was going through? Well... Last week, I got Rhema word. It's the, it's a word that, that 
that deals with your life now. It's like that per that person is talking to you. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the walking word of God. He said in this turnaround season, it's not so much about the written word, although the Bible is very important because it gives you a baseline, but it w will be more about the walking word, which spawns from the written word, but is is the written word and it's called the walking word. That's what he gave me. He's saying, I will give my people the walking word, like words. When I say words, I don't mean, I don't mean just they play. I don't mean one word syllables. But I, when I say words, I mean God, basically, God is going to say stuff that nobody's ever heard before, that there's no reference for, that there's nothing for. And the only way you're going to know that it's God is that if you have a dedicated, specific relationship with him, um, he's, he's really putting his church together. Um, he, he put us all in training. He's training us for a new season that he's going to bring about. There are people right now in the world that you have never heard of and they have really unique ministries. But the church and the world itself needs to be in tra training to handle the glory of these people. And these people are not like the preachers that you know to stand and talk. And uh, they're, not, they're not like a script, the scripture note-taking preachers. They are the bikers. They are um, the business people. They are people that you wouldn't speak, wouldn't think would speak the word of God. They are the ones. They are the ones that God will call. And even, even for those people that God doesn't call to preach. Um, he will give the walking word to them. For people who don't know the written word, you might get a word, um, something that the Lord says for one of your friends, but it won't be like the Lord told me this about you. It'll be more subtle than that. Because the Lord doesn't say something to you that he already hasn't spoken to the person. So it will be confirmation. And all those people that says, the Lord told me this about you, and they ha and the Lord hasn't told you about you, they're prob it's probably not the Lord, because the Lord uses prophetic utterances. What I mean by prophetic, I mean um, uh, like for uh, like it's foreknowledge. Some people some people uh, can see God gives them pictures about what's coming in a person's life before it happens just as confirmation, not as knowledge, but just as confirmation. So the Lord wa the Lord knows we are familiar with the uh, sixteen eleven uh, 
a version of his written word. We love it, we speak it, we quote it, we whatever. We we love it, but he's he says, get ready, because there is a generation, this generation, my nephew's age and down, they won't be so familiar with the written word. They'll they'll be more in tune with the walking word where the written word is a jumping off point for them. So so the written word is the walking word plus more. Uh when when the Lord told Noah all that stuff about building the ark, there was no precedence for the ark. There was not even rain, because back, back in Bible times, it, when the story was written, no, Noah and all the people around him had only seen water coming up from the ground not down from the sky so basically and Noah couldn't go to the Torah which is like their Hebrew scriptures and say uh, what what chapter and verse is it because it was unprecedented and through the cycle of time the Lord is going to be doing that again and he's saying I this is specifically for preachers. He's saying, I need preachers to not so much uh, focus on my written word, but understand that there's... Um, it was just tongues. Sorry but that for people who didn't understand. Uh, Tongues is like um, a language that the spirit communicates sometimes. That's what that was. Um, so it's for, so, so preachers need to focus not so much on the written word, because we love the written word and we just, we hunger for it. But there are things that God wants to say that is not that are not even in the Bible. There are strategies that God wants to give that there is no precedence for. You can't turn to Matthew twenty seven, or you can't turn uh, to Proverbs thirty one. This is going to be a new word that will come from the Lord with the basis in the written word. The walking word is not apart from the written word. It's the written word and. So, um, so all these false prophets that are not, that are not saying things that are in the Bible or are twisting the Bible for their own means, they're not of God. The Lord says in his written word, he says to try the spirits, see if they're of God. So what what he means by try the spirits um, is search yourself and search the written word to see if it's true. If it doesn't identify in your spirit where it says, yes, this person is uh, speaking truth, um, then it's probably not of God. Um, I'm excited about what, what God is going to be speaking to people. Um, he's saying, it's not, okay, and the last thing he said is, it's not as important to look, but it is very crucial 
to listen. He said, it is very crucial to listen. He says, um, don't focus so much about on what's going on around you. Focus on listening to what God has to say about what is going on around you. Because God is speaking every day, but the problem is we're not listening and we're missing key, uh, key elements, key words for our lives because we're not listening. He's saying the eyes will be less important in this season than the ears. The eyes will be less important than the ears. They will still be important, of course, but less so than the ears. This is just the training ground to what God has planned. Um, Corona is training us to do church differently. Corona is training us that the church is not a building, it's the people. We have been saying that for years, but I don't think till Corona we really understood the truth of that statement. And the Lord will show each pastor how to be the church without the building, even more than he has been doing. And he's saying, don't worry, pastors, if it, if it seems a little strange, a little weird, but he's going to do unprecedented things. You, you just, as a pastor, need to keep your ear to the ground. Not so much your eyes, because the eyes will be deceiving, but your ears to the ground and his written and walking word. This is about to be the most explosive season that the church has ever seen. We think it's explosive now. We think we're going to get back to quote unquote not normal, but but no, God is going to shift and do things and say things that we have never seen, and He's going to change the way we do quote unquote church. He's going to change the way. Uh, people have been preaching or people receive the word. His word is not going to change. But the way we, rec we receive it or deliver it will change. The way we do quote unquote worship will change. Um, like it's just going to be awesome. And for each church and for each pastor, it will be different. But now he's saying to not so much look, but listen. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches as, he's, as he spoke in Revelation. Uh, everything that he spoke is now coming around full circle. And I've heard a lot of people focus on Revelation and the book of Revelation, but what they're not focusing on is listening. And he's saying, and he's saying, um, don't focus on so much about is this the end time, is Jesus coming back soon, or whatever. He's saying to listen what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He's saying each church has a mandate for the kingdom. It's like a, 
uh, the body of Christ is like um, a seat. Okay. The body of Christ is like a company. He explained it. To, God explained it to me this way. It's like uh, like a company like Microsoft or Google or Facebook. God is the CEO of the company. And the pastors are the directors. And under each director is a department. And each department can run differently. Each department has different uh, ways of doing things and different ways of being. But it's all the same company. And like, so, or it's like the human body. God is like the brain of the organ of the um, church where where we as the church are are the limbs and we make the brain makes the limbs move and whatever the brain says the limbs follow, the emotions follow. So he's going to speak things that we have no scriptural reference for. And the only reason we'll know it's from him is because of our, our close relationship in the spiritual realm. This is going to be an awesome time of glory. It already is. It's just starting. But the problem is we're still waiting. We're still wanting to go back to where it was before. But he's saying, no, I need you to listen because there are things, there's some restructuring that I, that needs to happen. There are things that we do now that I want, that I want you to get rid of. There are things that I that I like what you're doing, but you need to change it slightly or whatever. And this is not only for pastors. This is for anyone. And he's restructuring, reorganizing, se separating, setting up. That's all he's doing in this season. So don't don't worry, God is in control, but but it's our decision. He holds the controls, but we can choose to follow it or not. We can choose to go our own way or or not. And he's saying now, what will you choose? Will you choose to follow what you're used to doing or or your way of doing things or your way of doing church or your way of preaching or your way of doing worship or will you follow my new way? He's saying these new ways will be a bit weird for people but people, but people who have never heard the gospel will be so attracted to these new ways. I see churches meeting in uh, like odd places like um, former strip clubs and unique ideas for ministry and all of this. And there is somebody out there listening to me that has a unique idea for a ministry and you're like lord this is crazy we can't do this nobody's ever done this before and but no matter how how hard you try and put it away it's still it's still staying 
and he's saying this is from the Lord the reason why you're getting dreams and the reason why you're getting revelations is because you are to be the catalyst to this vision to this thing to this uh, new way of doing ministry the days of preachers standing on pulpits and just talking or hooping and hollering they're not over but he wants to add to it he he wants to add to it I sincerely hear him saying that preaching like that is not over but I want that and because there are people that don't respond to uh, somebody standing up and, and just talking. There are people who like movement, who like other stuff, who like this, and who, I shouldn't say like, because we don't, we don't go um, by what we like, we go by what he says, but there are people who will respond better to this new style of preaching. He's saying, don't get rid of the old, just join it with the new. Have the traditional style of preaching, but join it with, with the new and unprecedented way of teaching. Remember I said the written word is not apart from the walking word? It's just joined to the walking word. So that's the same thing with preaching and worship and new ways and new styles and doing things. And it is just going to be wonderful. It's just going to be old joining with new and uh, different joining with sameness to create something wonderful, some wonderful fusion of the old and new. See, what we have been used to doing is when something new comes in, we get rid of the old or the old is diminished. And we, and then that new thing becomes all the rage until it becomes old and then somebody else comes in with a new thing and it goes on and on but he's saying this new walking word will entail a, a, a merging or a fusion of, of the putting together of the old with the new to create something beautiful because um, I think the old and the new structures and anything have good and not so good points and I don't and I sense that he's not going to throw out the baby with the bath water he's just going to add to, to make it more um, to make it to make his word uh, resp um, responsive to more people to make more people respond to his word because a lot of people are different like they don't respond to preaching the traditional way they think it's weird but they'll respond to something else it's the same word but a different method and so, some people love the former way of they respond well to preaching the the way that people do it now and he's saying I'm not gonna throw it out I'm just gonna add to it and so is the word of the Lord for today and I'm so excited about not only what he's doing now but how it will look after we come to the other side or whether we will come to the other side or he'll just keep adding and I'm just I'm just excited about 
who he'll be raising up in the next few years. Bye, guys. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you my past is over and new. All things are made new. Surrendering my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. You Make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. There's a scripture in Leviticus. Um, that says this year you, you will have to move it out to make room for the new and it's not that he's saying to me it's not so much you'll have to move it out but you'll have to join it with what's coming so It'll be an old and new joining and emerging and the church will be just so glorious. The church is already glorious, but it'll be more, I don't even know how to explain it. I don't even know how to explain what I'm seeing. It's just wonderful. Just new ways of like artistic, like artistic groups instead of meeting in church settings. And, just new creative ways of getting God's word about joined with the traditional way of preaching. I I can't, can't even explain what I'm seeing uh, prophetically in the spirit. It's so amazing. I'm so excited. It's going to be big. <laughs> That's all I can say. I will see you later. Lord, I, I, Jesus, Sorry guys, it's taking a while. So I'm going to just, it'll take me a sec second. Thank you.
Help me. In the name of Jesus, you will work for me. I just need to do this thing. Shut it off, I'll lose the video. Lord, I don't know what to do, Lord, help me. What to do here? Help me, Lord. Lord, I cannot lose this video. And if I turn my computer off, it's going to lose the video. Help me. I need you to help. I cannot lose this video! Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me! After I do this, it'll... Okay. I just need to put end video. Come on, baby, come on, come on, come on. Just come on. 
come on. I need you to come on. And then I can turn you off. This is so... Saying the Lord rebuke you. You don't want people to hear this, but it but I'm going to do this video. If I have to do it again, I'll do it again. But oh my god, I can't. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I wish I had like um, uh, a mouse mouse so I can. Oh God, I'm gonna lose the video. This is the most important video I've ever done, Lord. I need you to help me. Shit. Shift. Shift your focus. Um, this video, like, I need something to work here. I don't know what I can do, but I need this video is not going, I'm not turning my computer off. Guys, what I'm going to have to do is... is I'm going to have to do the voice mouse route. It'll take me a bit longer and I will probably trim the video. Lord, I can't do this. I I can't. I can't get rid of this video. It's too important. It's too important. I'm not going. I believe that, Lord, you're stronger than technology. I will give my computer a break after this. I will watch a movie. I will do something. But please, let me end this video so I can put it out to the people. Lord, please. Just please. Please. I need to.
every technology demon that is against getting this video out there, I, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I trust you, Father. This is your video, not mine. But Father, this is so important about the walking word and the written word and what you're doing in this season. I need to get this out there. Please, Lord, I will do anything. Just make the thing move up, please. Click end. Click and click and. <laughs> 